We can calculate the friction coefficient exactly when a viscous fluid is forced slowly down a pipe. In a moment I'll define what I mean by slowly, but the main point is that the flow must remain laminar. The flow at entry will be plug flow, meaning uniform velocity in the x direction, but a boundary layer will develop growing with the square root of x, and as it does so, the velocity profile changes until the boundary layer meets itself at the center of the pipe, from which point the flow is fully developed. In other words, the velocity profile doesn't change anymore. And as we shall see in the moment, this velocity profile is parabolic. An easy way to derive the velocity profile is to balance forces on cylindrical elements centered on the center line. So I define my axes. X is the distance along the center line. R is the radial distance away from the center line. The pipe itself has radius big R. And I'm going to consider an element of radius little r. And now I'll consider the forces on this control volume. The pressure on one side is p, and on the other is p plus partial dp by dx delta x. The shear stress is tau. Now this isn't the wall shear stress, this is a general shear stress, so I shall define it as positive in the x direction. And because the flow is fully developed, I can balance these forces, they must sum to zero. So the force on the perimeter, the shear force, is 2 pi r delta x times tau, minus the pressure force on both end plates, which is pi r squared partial dp dx delta x. These two forces must sum to zero. Solving for tau, I find tau is equal to r upon 2 dp by dx, where I've also changed from partial derivatives to ordinary derivatives, because p only varies in x. And I can model the shear stress in terms of the velocity gradient with the viscosity. Tau is equal to mu dvx by dr. And here I've also introduced the fact that vx only depends in r. So I substitute for tau into this expression and I get that mu dvx by dr is equal to r upon 2 dp by dx. So this gives us the velocity gradient in terms of the pressure gradient, we need to work out the velocity profile by integrating this and applying the no-slip boundary condition. So I can rearrange this expression into the integral of dvx is equal to the integral of r upon 2 mu dp by dx dr. Now by the no-slip condition, when r is equal to big R, I have zero velocity, and when r is equal to r, I have velocity vx, and to be really careful, I should be sure that this r is a dummy variable, i.e. it's not the same as the r in the limit, and I can perform the integration from which I obtain the fact that vx has indeed a parabolic profile. Note that this term here is always positive, because big R is bigger than little r, such that the velocity is always in the opposite direction to the pressure gradient. So we have found an expression for the velocity as a function of r, the radial coordinate. Now we need to evaluate the average velocity in the pipe. So this average velocity is the total flow rate in the pipe divided by the cross-sectional area. And working through the algebra, one discovers a relationship between the velocity in the pipe and the axial pressure gradient. Now we can obtain an expression for the friction coefficient in terms of the average flow rate. We take the expression we derived earlier and substitute in for dp by dx from the expression above. And this gives quite a neat expression for cf, the friction coefficient. Now we define a non-dimensional number. I'll call it the Reynolds number and define it as rho vd divided by mu. And if I substitute this expression into cf, I find that cf is equal to 16 divided by re. And note that this Reynolds number is based on the average velocity in the pipe. So for a laminar pipe flow, we find that the friction factor cf is just 16 divided by the Reynolds number. So if we plot log of cf versus log of the Reynolds number, we get a straight line with gradient minus 1, 
and intersect with the log Reynolds equals zero point of log 16. And this can be very easily checked experimentally.